Filters for 3D printing is something I've seen much more of these past few years. When I first started out and for a long time after that, I was told that you didn't need a filter for PLA or PTG, but you should use one if printing with things like ABS or other higher temp materials. To this day, every time the topic comes up, the conversation is all over the place with very little consensus. While I don't have a device to measure particle count, size, and type in my studio's air quality, I've seen enough to pick up a fairly large filter for my studio that uses a combination of carbon and HEPA for its filtering. Overall, I'm really happy with this filter, with my biggest complaint being its price. The unit itself is $300, and each time I need to replace a filter, it's $60 if I go with the OEM part. This option might be a bit overkill, and it's why I was really excited to see Through the Frame release the air mod for the IKEA Opetvin filter. This unit is much more affordable and seems to be a great option for anyone that's wanting to add a bit of filtration to their room or their studio that packs a bigger punch than some of the really small filters included with some of the modern 3D printers. In today's video, we'll take a look at this filter, the printable upgrade, and go through the process of getting it installed. So with all that being said and without further ado, let's get right into today's video. Before diving into the upgrade, let's take a quick look at this unit. The Opetvin sells for anywhere between $28 to $35, and its form factor of 11 by 5 by 9 inches makes it extremely portable. The filter is also AHAM or AHAM certified, which is something I'd never heard of before making this video. For those interested, the certification verifies the manufacturer's stated clean air delivery rate for tobacco dust, and pollen through a series of tests done in a lab. In the case of this little filter, the product page states it's ideal for a small 75 square foot room and that it's able to cycle the air in that space five times per hour. What you might have caught onto is that this testing is done for tobacco, dust, and pollen, not VOCs or particulates that would be coming off of a 3D printer. In the filter's default state, it's intended to filter out PM 2.5 particles, which are particles ranging from 0.1 to 2.5 micrometers. Just about all the articles I can find talking about fumes for 3D printers refer to UFPs or ultra-fine particles. These are ones that are in the range between 1 to 100 nanometers, which means that the IKEA filter in its stock configuration won't actually do anything for them. Today's video is brought to you by MicroSwiss. Based in the US, MicroSwiss manufactures high quality 3D printer upgrades, including extruders, hot ends, and nozzles for over 150 different models. I've been running their hardware in my machines for over six years and have always been impressed by their meticulous attention to detail. Their newest line of drop in hot ends called Flowtech features high flow, and its leak proof design allows for cold nozzle swapping. Flowtech is constantly expanding, and they recently added a version for the Bamboo Lab X1 and P1 series of printers. From plated brass and hardened steel CM2 to CHT and Diamondback, they have nozzles available for any application. Links are in the description to find out more about the various upgrades they offer or to pick up your own. One of the most common mediums used in desktop 3D printer filters or DIY ones is activated carbon. The reason for this is that it's an excellent option for trapping volatile organic compounds or VOCs. With activated carbon, the goal is to increase its surface area, which increases its ability to trap gases. This is done through adsorption, the process of airborne pollutant particles being attracted to and sticking to the outside of the carbon molecule. Since the pollutants are attaching to the outside of the carbon surface, it will eventually become oversaturated, which is why it is incredibly important to replace your carbon on a regular cadence to maintain effectiveness. Now that we know a little bit about activated carbon and its ability to aid in filtering, you'll see why I am so excited about Through the Frame's upgrade called Air. This mod adds an additional layer of filtration to the Upadvin filter by giving it two large compartments to install activated carbon. This is a fairly simple upgrade, and aside from 3D printed parts, you'll need 14 to 16 M3 by 8 mm button head screws and two M3 nuts, depending on which version you print. 
Of course, you'll also need activated carbon. I bought a pretty large bag from Fabrico a while back for a few different Nevermore filter mods that I'll have linked in the description, along with another option with some carbon that Voxel PLA sells. For the printed parts, really any material should work since it's basically just a housing that holds a bunch of activated carbon, but on the project page all of the examples used were PETG, so I went ahead and printed out all those parts in PETG as well. There's a 3MF project file available for Bamboo Studio and Orca Slicer, along with an alternative one for Prusa Slicer. So hopefully you'll be covered and not need to adjust any additional settings. At the time of recording, there are two versions of the frame available, with one being a split frame that you then assemble after printing out both pieces, and the other one, which is what I printed, being the unibody frame, which just requires you to have a printer large enough to print it in one go. The larger frame requires a printer with a bed of at least 225 by 280 millimeters. Once you've decided on which version of the frame you'll be printing, all that's left is to slice up the files using the built-in settings and send off the parts to be printed. For the larger frame, on one of the corners I had a slight bit of warping, so if you are printing the single body version, now would be a great time to test out the paintable mouse ears found in Orca Slicer that we covered in last week's video. If you printed the split frame version, start by installing the little H key to connect the two halves, and install screws and nuts through the inner walls to mate those parts together. Next, we need to fill the hexagon pattern with lots of activated carbon. I started by just trying to pour all of the carbon in evenly, but that proved to be trickier than expected. So I put on a pair of gloves and used my fingers to brush the carbon into all of the openings, then finally placed a few into the sections that needed more. With that done, grab the thin mesh cover, align it with the base that has all of the carbon, and install seven screws to secure everything and lock the carbon inside. Since you're just threading into plastic, make sure that you don't over tighten it. And if you have any issues with that mesh cover sitting flush, it probably means that you have a little piece of carbon that's just sticking up too high. So you'll want to remove the mesh cover and make sure that there is no carbon sticking up higher than it should be. The two carbon housings have little notches that snap into place with the frame. So make sure you install them in the correct orientation and push to pop them into place. All that's left is to pull off the stock cover from the filter and slide air in its place. And just like that, your filter still has the ability to remove those larger dust, pollen, and tobacco particles, and it can also aid in filtering out VOCs. Remember, in order to have the carbon continue working effectively, regular replacement is a must. Through the frame recommends every 25 to 30 days if you're using the filter daily. While I still plan on running my larger filter on a regular basis, I will definitely be pulling this out anytime I'm doing some desktop soldering or playing around with a new material and just want a little bit of additional filtration. I am by no means an expert on the subject of filtration, and I strongly recommend everybody and encourage you to go out and do your own research and figure out what is going to be the best and make the most sense for your specific setup. However, if you don't have any filter at all, I really like how accessible this IKEA filter is in combination with the Air upgrade. And that's been Air. I hope that you enjoyed this video and that you learned a bit about this little filter as well as the Air upgrade, and maybe even a few additional things regarding carbon and just sort of filtration in general. If you have any questions about this mod, let me know in the comments down below, and I'll have a link in the description over to both the filter as well as the project page for Air. On that note, don't forget to like and subscribe for more great videos. We make a video just about every single week, so there's always fresh content coming your way. And if you do want to support the channel further, I'll have links down below in the description over to our Patreon where there are some really awesome rewards. Huge thank you to all of our existing Patreon supporters. I appreciate each and every one of you for allowing me to come back every single week and spend more time doing what I love, which is making content for you all to enjoy. On that note, this has been Daniel from ModBot. I look forward to seeing you guys in my next video. Peace, guys.